Hello YouTube, this is Freaza and today I'll be showing you how to make a dot change script in Roblox LUA. Um, first of all, um, today unlike my other videos I have everything already prepared um, because I feel it's easier to explain things that I've already um, made and I can concentrate more on explaining how it works than actually writing it and debugging it. Um, so first off, um, I figured that uh, the best way to show dot changed would be something um, useful to a lot of uh, the viewers, like um, an energy bar of sorts. Um, if you may know that in my Naruto games I always have chakra bars, uh, which is handy for um, showing the player how uh, much jutsu they can use before having to recharge and blah blah blah. Um, of course you could just disable and enable scripts, you know. Um, like tools, um, like add a five second delay at the end, but um, the player won't know when that five second delay is up, and also it's kind of lame. I think uh, energy bars are more strategic. Well, first of all, um, it's not actually that hard. Um, so it only has like eight lines for the. Um, that the entire chakra script, that's how easy it really is. If you look in free models you might see like ones with like a thousand lines that do virtually the same thing as this, but uh, anyway this is the setup. First of all you'll want to click on player GUI and insert a screen GUI like so. Then you'll want to add uh, an image label inside that screen GUI. Let's see, image label, here it is. Not to be mixed up with image button, which is similar but different. And then you'll want to add um, another image label inside that. Uh, once you have that set up, um, you'll want to go to the properties of um, the first image label and change the name to background or backing or something of the sorts and then you'll want to change the position its x coordinate to 0 0.05 the y coordinate to 0 0.85 and I keep the off offsets at 0 um, that can mess things up. And then um, for the size properties, um, 0 .0, no, 0 0.3 for the x axis and 0 0.05 for the y axis. Um, if you've done that, then it should uh, show uh, well, both the bars in the exact same place. Uh, one bar will be overlapping the other bar. Now let's go into the script. Um, just ignore the enabler, that's what I use to add the magic value into the player when the player spawns. Um, but since that script won't be in there, uh, we'll uh, add it manually. You'll want to click in your player's name, mine's is Freaza, I don't know what yours is, but. Um, Insert object and then uh, number value or int value and then insert. It'll show up as uh, the name value and then you'll want to change that value name to magic and you'll see here that um, in the data of this new magic int value or number value it has another value which is zero. That's what we'll be using to um, tell how much uh, magic the player has. Once you've got all that added we can get onto the script itself. Um, you'll want to insert objects on the, um, not the backing but the, uh, the image label inside the backing and uh, well um, first of all um, 
Uh, if you've not named that like bot or anything like that, then I suggest naming it now before you get confused. Well, in case you do. Um, once you've got a script, uh, it, it doesn't matter what the script's name is because we won't be referring to it at all. Um, you'll want to put something like this in it. But um, just copying and pasting it uh, from what I've wrote is meaningless, so I'll explain it step by step. First of all, magic equals script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot magic. This means that um, it's labeling magic as the script's um, parent, so that's one parent, two, three, four, five, and that brings us to Freaza, and then inside Freaza, magic. And that refers to the magic number value or int value that we just added. And uh, now that we've got that labelled, we can change uh, magic easier. And then uh, we're going to create a function. So a uh, function, um, and I've named my function change, you can name your function whatever you want. And then an end underneath as the blue line to the left of function signifies. And then under this function we'll want magic dot changed connect change. What this does is it checks if magic and uh, if anything inside magic or magic has been changed such as the data or behavior then it will run the change function. Um, so um, a lot of people think that um, you need to check like magic dot value dot changed, but you don't. Um, dot changed will check if anything inside of the item has been changed. Um, value itself doesn't have any items inside it except itself. So, well, and it can't be inside itself, so it's equal to itself. Um, so that if you put magic dot value dot changed, it's not going to do anything because it doesn't work that way. Uh, that confused me at first too, but just to clear that up, um, you can either uh, list x as script dot parent, or just write script dot parent dot size blah 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 blah, um, because we will be changing the size of the bar. Um, so x is this bar, script dot parent. Okay, and you may not be unfamiliar with this, but uh, you them to um, is pretty much the vector free of GUIs. Um, it allows you to manipulate the um, x axis and y axis of a GUI as well as the offset in the x axis and offset in the y axis. And first of all, it is four numbers. I'll just explain it here. is x dot size and this will make x dot size equals u dim dot new zero 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 zero. The first zero is um, the size of the x axis, which is like the left and right size, or um, horizontal. Uh, the second number is the offset. Um, by the way, you can see all this and uh, size itself. Um, the third number is uh, the y-axis scale, vertical, and the fourth number is the y-axis offset, vertical. Um, if you ever forget which number is which, just look in the um, label or buttons or whatever it's, uh, size and it will show them in order. The first number, the second number, the third number, the fourth number. Um, Normally, I only use the first and first num the first and third numbers because uh, those are um, what are used to generally change the size of a scale. Um, I don't use it often because um, if you put it in, if you put a GUI inside another GUI, it automatically scales it to its parent. Um, so it already does the work for you. But um, if you don't do that, then scale can be useful. But I never use scale. Uh, now I'll just clear this. 
Um, you might be wondering what magic dot value divided, I mean, slash a hundred means. Well, I guess I just gave it away. <laughs> and what this does is it takes x's dot x size and um, for the x um, size's horizontal value, it um, just divides magic dot value by a hundred. So let's assume magic dot value is a hundred. And if we divide that 100 by 100, we'll get 1. So that means that its scale will be 1. Because um, the scale of the bar to the backing is uh, 1, 1. Which will make it um, its parent size. Um, so if the player's magic value is 100, then the x and y, no, the x um, axis of the GUI will be 1 as well. But if the uh, player's magic dot value is like 50, then it will scale it to 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5, so it will be half the size of uh, backing. Uh, this might be hard, well it's hard to explain, I know that for sure, uh, but it might be hard to comprehend, but um, once you see it for yourself you'll understand what I mean. Um, I have set up a tool which will allow us to test this. Um, you can make this tool yourself if you want. Uh, but I'll show you here. What this does is, first of all, it gets player from uh, game.players, which refers to the players folder. Um, get player from character. Uh, this finds a player's character in workspace. If you're trying to find the um, the player from um, an item which isn't actually the character, like assuming there was a brick named Freaza and you wanted to find the player from that brick, um, you'll have to use find first child brick name um, because you can't get a player from a character unless it's actually a character because you know it would be a brick or whatnot. Um, so, but because this is of a character, we're going to use uh, get player from character. And script.parent.parent. Um, well, here, script.parent.parent is backpack, but once you equip tools, as I've explained before in my other videos, it goes into your character. So when you actually equip the tool, equip the tool and click it, script.parent.parent will be character. And uh, not backpack. line here, it checks if player's magic value is greater than 10. No, no, well, it checks if player's magic to value minus 10 is greater than 0. Um, this is like a test run basically, because it's going to be removing 10 from the player's magic value, so it can't remove 10 if it isn't there. So it's instantly checking if I have more than 10 um, energy and um, if it's removed 10 energy, would I still have more than 0? And if so, it removes 10. And I'll show you here, just to prove it is legit. Boom, boom, boom. And now you can see that the backing I have made transparent and white. Um, its background transparency is 0 0.8 and its colour free is uh, white. You can manipulate that manually in the backing here. Well, it's more like grey, but yeah, and as you can see, I can't use it because I have zero. Um, another thing I've added in main is um. Oh wait, I lost that. I'll add that in the now. it will check if magic's value is less than zero and if it is then it will change magic value to zero. Um, of course magic value can't go under zero as of now but if attacks take off amounts like you know 93.75268 and stuff and you're using like yeah, magic restoring items at the same time then things can get out of hand so 
Um, this will just make sure that uh, it won't bug out and your tracker won't become like minus 50 or anything like that. And as you can see when I change this to like minus 8 or something like that, it changes to 0. And also I'm going to use this to stop um, low level hackers um, by adding elsef magic dot value is greater than 100 then magic dot value equals 100 um, this is also useful for um, the same reason as before uh, like in my Naruto game if people use soldier pill and charge chakra when they already have full um, chakra then they'll have like 400 chakra um, so this will change the um, magic back to 100 if it's greater than 100. Um, if you're going to like change around your uh, your maximum amount of magic a lot, then I suggest adding a maximum uh, uh, magic uh, value as well and checking it against that too. Um, so you can just change magic dot value to max tracker and um, uh, max. Uh, magic dot value or whatnot. Um, but I wanted to keep it simple so this is a 13 line way of uh, making a functioning uh, energy bar. You can use this for you know, uh, games like Chakra and Naruto, Furioku, um, Riatsu, Energy, Magic, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's useful in all sorts of games. Um, or you could just make it like a stamina bar or a health bar. Um, health bars are relatively easier because you don't even need a value. All you need to do is change it. It's X um, coordinate size to the player's character's humanoid's health dot value divided by 100. It's extremely simple. Um, it doesn't need a few hundred lines. It doesn't. You don't need to be a genius at maths or anything like that. All you need to do is uh, those 13 lines. And uh, well. And that sums up how to use dot changed and make an energy bar on uh, Roblox. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can use it to make great games like Full Metal Alchemist or whatnot or um, anime games or whatever you're working on or even um, I don't know an oxygen bar and a swimming game who knows. <laughs> um, I look forward to seeing your creations. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.